Course here at uh, Mammoth Lakes. Quite a tough one, by the way. 20.5 kilometer course, highest of the 1993 series. And the low point ran about 2,600 feet, uh, 50 meters. The girls here ready for the start. They've got a big climb ahead of them, up to 6.2 kilometers, the peak at the top of the climb. And there we are, that's the course today then. Quite an undulating course and a tough one. They're way up in altitude. It's going to be very, very difficult indeed. And that start, always so important. Well, the crowd may roar, but these girls have got a tough job on today, trying to head this girl in the lead already. What an amazing performance. Julie Furtado, she's been unstoppable so far. She's come into this race having won all the previous rounds. Can anybody top of this time round? Well, into an early lead. No surprise, heading on uh, to perhaps another victory. That'll notch up her 16th if she completes this one in the lead. Wearing the blue jersey as the leader on the Grundig series. Nobody so far has topped her. And in fact, in every other event she's ridden, she's won those two. And already out there, going up this lunar landscape, she's opened up a tremendous lead. This is low gear stuff on what they call the granny ring, moving down on the triple chain ring onto the very smallest one on the inside. And the biggest sprocket at the back. Well, some good moves coming through here then as they've started out early on. Number 215 trying to get up there, that's uh, Tammy Jacks, the USA. She had a very bad crash early this year and hurt her kidneys and uh, chipped her hip bone too, but she looks like she's coming back into form now. Way up into the snow. This is real altitude stuff. And this, of course, is where the Americans are supreme. Julie Furtado, 26 years of age, comes from New York but she lives now in Durango, in Colorado. That's way up in the uh, mountains. Susan Amate going through into second place. Well, quite a big distance between the two of them, but closing up at the moment, just behind the 209, Jill Smith, the Canadian girl from Vancouver. And behind, more interest between Tammy Jacks coming up and Chantal de Coeur. Chantal de Coeur, number 204, also riding for GT. They ride those unusual bicycles with a triangulated back end to them. Now Julie Ingersoll. We haven't seen much of her so far in the series. Comes also from Boulder, Colorado. And Sylvia First, the world champion, wearing the rainbow jersey. Well, she's not had a very good series so far. Back with our leader. This girl is absolutely unstoppable. Look, nobody in sight at the moment. This great fire road, tremendous mountain biking country. And this, of course, is where the whole sport was invented, out in uh, California. Well, the Diamondback girl is trying to close up here. So Susan DeMatti, this is the best we've seen of her for some time. But no doubt about it, the crowd down in the finish area can recognize this girl on to yet another great ride. Mountain bike down her world champion in 92. She's now showing her road abilities too. She's road champion in America way back in 1989, so it gives you some idea of her success. Here we are, Platts flying, 205, Susan DeMatte, the USA girls really dominating this section at the moment. 30 years of age from San Francisco, she's just gone through, 209 chasing down now, Jill Smith from Canada. And just behind there, Chantal de Corps from Switzerland. So they've got two Americans, followed by Jill Smith from Canada, Chantal de Corps, Switzerland. Then Tammy Jacks of the USA closing up on them now. Well, on this final lap of this course, they're going to be in the saddle now for what? Well, on towards uh, an hour and 40 minutes, maybe longer than that. They really have been out there a long time now, these girls. And in fact, she's closing up a little bit here. 205 behind, but uh, the shot, I think, here 
giving us on our telephoto lens a bit of an illusion because the gap's been yo-yoing quite a bit, but Susan DiMatteo has certainly come back now. Well, really matters. We have information that she punctured uh, way back down the road then, lost a lot of time as well. So she's out of the chase. A lot of good girls riding today. Inga Thompson, the girl who won a world championship medal on the road. She's racing together, as is Ruthie Matters, but they're way off the pace right now. Debbie Merrill, the British rider, looks like she will occupy 15th place. She comes from Hebden Bridge. That's way up in Yorkshire, but I can tell you it's not altitude up there, but she looks like she's on to 15th place as 209 goes through now. That was Jill Smith. Girls much closer together, but our leader's beginning to put the pressure on now and get away from them. Just look at the rocky conditions here. The sun, though, beginning to beat down. Susan Dematte off the pace now, well over two minutes in arrears. Well, the girls have really been slimmed down by the hard course today. And only something like about 20-odd riders left in the race. These leading girls absolutely setting a cracking pace. Inga Thompson, the road rider now, is something like about 12, 13 minutes down on a leader here. Even the world champion struggling too, well over 12 minutes down on a leader, struggling to stay in the top 10 places. So this is going to be quite a humbling of a race yet again. The heat shimmering down on Julie Furtado. Only got to have the best of five plus riding in Berlin to keep that blue jersey. Nobody can beat us so far. We're going on then to uh, Mammoth Lakes next week, then uh, Newnham in uh, Britain, and then the final in uh, Germany. But this girl at the moment looks absolutely unstoppable. Come back after break to see the result of this race. This is Luigi, a wonderful husband. Because instead of watching the soccer game, he's letting his wife watch her favorite quiz show. For continued marital harmony, we highly recommend a Grundig Portable as the perfect second television. Okay, Luigi? American football stars Andre Risen and Reggie White both agree Foot Locker is the place to get Nike shoes to train in. But they don't always agree on what training is. There you too. You call that training? 2000, 2001, 2002, 3000, 3000, 4000. <laughs> Nike, now at Foot Locker, where it all begins. Welcome back then to the Grundig World Cup race at uh, Mammoth Lakes. Undoubtedly, Julie Furtado has set a hot pace right since the start. No one's been able to get close to this girl at all, wearing the blue jersey as a leader in the series. So right now, she's well upset to knock up her 16th victory of the year. Look at this magnificent scenery in this part of the world. Of course, it's a place where, during the winter, there's plenty of uh, skiing going on around here, but now lots of spectators turned out. There's something like over 10,000 people come to three days of racing up here, and they've had uh, close on 3,000 competitors. They've had kamikaze down Hill racing, they've had uh, uh, the downhill mountain biking and uh, the racing here in the Grundig World Cup, plus the rounds of the Norba Championship as well. So plenty of activity today at Mammoth Lakes, California. And it is coming towards the finish now, dropping down what they call Beach Cruiser Hill. And she's got this one cruising into a finish. Some interesting uh, routes around this one. One's called Follow Me. There's another part of the track called Over the Bars. Down Beach Cruiser into finishing straight. No doubt about it. She stitched up yet another great win. Everyone she's competed in so far since Barcelona in Spain. This girl, Julia Fortano, has run out winner. That feels pretty good. I felt really, really good. Um, the hardest part of the course is the win. Really, really bad headwinds on all the climbs. Thank you. Thank you. But I look good. Well, she certainly looked good. She's certainly showing tremendous form at the moment. Look at that gap there back to Susan DeMatte. And on the overall rankings, nobody's going to stop this girl at the moment, Julie Furtado. Bad luck for Caroline Alexander from Great Britain, riding for Louis Garneau. She was struggling with altitude. She's dropped out the top five. Well, 
Beat Vale will surprise a few people by his success in the race last week at Vale. And now the Mongoose rider looking forward to this event, but he's got a lot of opposition. This World Cup for men very strongly fought out. The points go down to 50th place, and so far 152 riders have scored points in the series that started way back in Barcelona. As ever, the start is all important. Let's see who cracks it. Well, the dust is flying, but they've got that big climb ahead of them. On the front then, Albert Eiton, followed by Daniel Brushy, then Ned Overend, Travis Bound, David Vines, John Tomac, Bay Vettel, back there about, well, eight from the front, Tim Rutherford, Tinker Durez, Mike Clover, and Gerhard uh, Zabdribliak. What a great race we've got here on our hands. They really are close stuff. Well, here we are, out on that first lap, right up at the top of the climb. Tremendous climb, this one. 1,400 feet of climbing per lap, right into the very thin air. Well, halfway up here, it's 9,900 feet above sea level. They're now getting towards the top of this one. Interesting group beginning to form at the front. Number 23 is Don Mara of the USA. Number 14 there, that's David Vines, also USA. But look at number 29, Tim Gould, making a welcome return to form. The British rider in third spot. Just ahead of number 10, Ned Overend, one of the great old campaigners of mountain biking. And number two, just behind him there, that's Tinker Jurez. This is a cracking group of riders. They've already begun to get a bit of a good gap behind them. And I tell you, the spectators have found their way up here on the ski lifts. He's getting cold feet, isn't he? He's got a very expensive looking aluminium mountain bike there, but he's decided that he better keep off the course because the riders now working their way back up the climb yet again. And Tim Gould has taken the lead. Well, this is great to see Tim back in action then, the 29 year old from Worksworth in Derbyshire. Been mountain biking since 1988, and he really burst on the scenes when he won the man versus horse race in Clanutrid Wells, and he went across to ride on the normal races. That's the North American Bicycle Association off-road series about three years ago, and tramps the field enormously. But he's been very sick recently. He's had a very great deal of trouble sleeping at night. He's had to take various medicines to cure that sleeping thing, which has taken his form totally off him. And understand now he's been actually lowering his medicines, and he's now back in form. Here, the Diamondback rider. David Vines is with him. Diamondback, that's the name of a rattlesnake that eats, uh, well, it goes out in the uh, desert, and mongoose is a little uh, uh, animal that eats the uh, diamondbacks, and those are the old BMX names, by the way, it's go back an awful long time. I mentioned it before, so please forgive me if you've heard it before, but uh, certainly just, it's good to see these BMX names in uh, the sport now being continued forward. And looking back down here, the chase, they're well off the pace at the moment. That's at the back is Tinker Juris, another of the great uh, BMX riders, but coming through there, number 10, Ned Overend, the grand old man of the sport. Nice little group here. John Weissenrad has moved up there as well, but John Tomac is in this little chasing group. The ex-world champion, one, two, three, uh, back off the front. The rally rider at the moment, working with that little group. It's like a road race, isn't it, eh? I mean, most of the time in mountain biking, you can count them on a calendar, the time gap between them. But look at this. Well, back with our leaders. This is close. David Vines, Don Mara, Tim Gould, Tinker Jurez. Albert Eiton, oh, there's a lot of top stars have got into this one here, and the crowd appreciating the action they've got coming through here. That's him, Eiton, just going through 20. Then John Tomax made it up as well. Vines putting the pressure on, trying to get away from Gould. Don Mara's with them. This threesome really have opened up a tremendous gap now. Well, that li little group have got a 35 second lead on the chasers. And the crowd appreciating every moment of this one. It's just a cracking race. Well, John Tomac, the crowd's darling here. He's gonna have to do something. He's gonna catch up with that little lot in front because right now they really have put on a hot pace and opened up an enormous gap. Mind you, he's a gutsy rider, he's always prepared to come back and have a go. Oh, problems here. 
and that looked like his chainring protector. I'm not quite sure what that was doing being thrown away. It's gone anyway. Well, this little group then on lap two of this race. Look at that. This is the problem, of course, you see. Tim Gould at the back here. These very knobbly tyres they have, 26-inch wheels with maybe uh, two-inch diameter tyres on them. They have to have them with really good uh, treads on them. And uh, take a jersey. Watch now. There he goes. You can see that the inner tube's tucked in his back pocket. You can puncture dead easy here. And if you puncture, by the way, you have to repair the bike yourself. And that's why they carry the spare tubes and keep their fingers crossed they don't puncture. A lot of these riders also riding front suspension on the forks at the front because of the buffeting they're getting off the rocks on this part of the course. These are our three leaders. Tim Gould, just the back here, sitting in well, welcome return to form as far as Tim's concerned. We've not seen him in the classification so far. He came good in Vale uh, last week, began to show uh, reasonably well, but right now then, he's with this leading group and that's good. There he is. Just a bit off the pace right away at the moment. Uh, Gary Ford has started slowly, and I think he's also suffering the altitude, but he's quite happy just to ride in at the moment, perhaps looking forward to the rounds that we're going to have in uh, uh, Plymouth in Britain on August the 28th, 29th. And the one next week, uh, well, that'll be his, I suppose, opportunity of showing his form on home ground. Here we go. Nice little group. Tomac trying to work his way through. And begin to suffer just a bit at the moment. Number 10, what a great shame. He's really finding the pressure on him now, net over end. 37 years of age, the oldest rider on the series at the moment. Good climber, ex-road racer. We've got a good group of blokes with him now, but he's beginning to struggle somewhat. Well, they really are being shredded uh, by the speed up the front at the moment. That was Daniel Bruschi going through. He's really off the pace right now. And so, as his riders begin to struggle, Albert Eitan is just being dropped. We're going to take a short break, come back in a couple of moments. This is Edward B., also known as Fast Fingered Eddie. Eddie keeps busy by stealing car radios, but business is going downhill because Grundig has car radios with portable control panels and electronic security codes. Too much for Eddie. For you. Poor Eddie. Aber immer öfter. Weil es alkoholfrei ist? Nein, weil es ein Bier ist. Klaus Thaler. Alles, was ein Bier braucht. Here they are. Well, they come back. Interview here. Welcome back to this round of the Grundig World Cup. That's Don Mara on his way through. Great cyclo cross right away, champion of America in uh, the last, uh, what, three years, 91, 90, and 89 as well. And John Tomac trying to get up to them. This man really putting the power on now. He's managed to get away from those group he was in before. And Ned Oberyn is beginning to struggle. What a great shame then for this uh, great classic rider. All sorts of people in all sorts of trouble at the moment. The pace is hot. John Weissenrader just gone through. He's been to move up through the field with Tinker Jerez. Sweetly, their bikes are just slipping around these turns. They're hardly losing any speed. They're riding their bikes very well. Well, you can probably hear the come in the background from uh, one of our American colleagues, and certainly she's talking about uh, John Tomac here, right on his granny ring. And behind them, Weissenrader and Tinker Jerez trying to stay in contention at the moment. Weissenrader, he's another ex-road rider, by the way. Good to see him in such a good form. He's only come on the scene in the last what? Well, couple of rounds we've had in the Grundig series, and he's going very, very well indeed. Bison Rider and Tinker Juris. Juris, what, won the one in uh, Mount St. Anne. That was a great uh, performance as far as he's concerned. Bison Rider, him fighting out there. Well, further back down the field, there's uh, Zadribalek beginning to struggle just a bit. Number nine, these are some of the back markers. I say back markers, the, the field now is being decimated. There's only something like about uh, 60 riders left in the race. And struggling down there, what, uh, in the top 50 at the moment, Peter Stiefel. He's over, what, nearly half an hour down at the moment. Darrell Price in trouble as well. Running around about, what, 50th overall. Also looking at the backs at the moment. Uh, last man going through, Samuel Zala. Uh, Samuel Zara the third, actually. He rides the red line. He's way off the pace. These are the leading group we're with now. Oh, 
Jimmy's looking good. They must be pleased with this. Schwinn, by the way, he's riding for It's one of the oldest, well-established uh, uh, bicycle manufacturers in the States. It was a family firm until about, what, six months ago when the Scott Company took it over. They uh, had what they called Chapter 11 when they had some financial troubles. Here, Diamond back, one of the new names on the block, came in the, during the BMX day, chasing after the Schwinn rider. And the Schwinn family have been back in bikes, well, I suppose, nearly 100 years now. Tremendous long name in American bicycle manufacturing. And here are the crowds who made their way up because this is a great ski area. They can take the uh, ski lifts to go right at the top and uh, watch the riders come down and freewheel down. And they're watching John Tomac here. Not one of his best seasons, by the way. He had a third, oh, sorry, fourth place in Barcelona. Uh, he had, uh, let's look at this, uh, 50, yeah, he was second place in Hoofles at the moment. But uh, not really having one of his best seasons, John. He's struggling to stay in the top five in the Grundig Championship. But, of course, the World Championships are yet to come as well. And perhaps he'll try and get his crown there. He's a great descender. He's won one of the Grundig downhills as well. Let's watch him in action. Back up then with our leaders at the moment. David Vines on this final lap. Together with Tim Gould, they managed to get rid of the other ride that was with them. So they really are making life very difficult indeed because Don Mar has dropped off the pace. Tim Gould and David Vine setting a pace. John Tomax chasing to come up to them. Well, Marla got blown off on lap three and they thought in fact he got mechanical trouble. He really dropped off the pace. These two have really sorted things out now. We understand that Tomac now is less than a minute down on the leaders and he's trying to close the gap. Gone past Mara as well, so these two are now batting for first and second place, whilst behind Tomek gone past Mara, and unfortunately too, Ned Overend is struggling. He's dropping out the top ten, and he's had to get off his bike. He's absolutely exhausted. Gally Ford persevering, looks like he'll make the top 15 as well. Some men really are struggling today. Bob Roll, that great American bike rider who raced for the 7-Eleven team, he's just struggling to stay inside the top 20 as well. Nicky Craig's outside the top 22 at the moment from Stockport, the Diamondback rider. He's another man, I think, like Gary Ford, decided up here at altitude, he's got to be very careful with his strength. But uh, here, Tomac really putting the pressure on now. He was out of contention, he was back with the, the chasers, and now he's closing that gap into third place. Look at this fella go. Nobody chasing him now, just those riders up in front. This group now out of contention as far as he's concerned. He so, Bait Vable there, number 25. Not on the ride that he put in when he won the one at Vale. It's going to be a victory then for Vines, who's got away from Tim Gould. Right on the line, only about, what, four seconds separate. That's been the closest finish we've had in the Grundig World Cup so far this year. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I think and the crowd here appreciating that sterling effort by John Tomek. So here he comes in, really is the crowd's darling. Great road rider, great BMX rider, great mountain biker, takes third place. Well, his ex-cycler crossman now being absolutely up that altitude, scorched by the heat rather than the mud of the winter. He's going to come into fourth place then. So that's uh, Don Marler. John Mason rather thundering in here to fifth place. Tinker Jury looks like he's going to take sixth. Almost all the work on this hill here, and I was just hanging on. And then he let me go on by over the crest of the hill before we drop into Red's Lake, and I stayed in front of him uh, through there. But we weren't going too fast. We were just so tired that... It was probably the slowest through there, and I almost, I kind of got my wheel up on one of the edges there, and I was going down with this foot out, just <laughs> like on a skateboard, and it was as close to being a pretty big digger. Well, that was uh, uh, nice. the winner then, uh, David Vines here, Bait Vable. Well, not so good for him today. He finished in 12th spot, one last week in Vail. But out of the reckoning this time. Look at that close finish between Tim Gould and David Vines. Good to see Tim back in uh, good form again. Wishing the best of luck for the rest of the season. So now let's look at the overall classification after that one. Still 
Gally Ford, I think he's just going to make it into the top five. Yes, good for him. So Great Britain represented there. And good to see Tim back on form. There he is then. Slow motion of our two top men of today. And the start of this really tough mountain bike race sponsored by Grundy. This is the one, the highest altitude race a lot. It's been a tough one. Only something like 59 riders finished. Julie Patalo still dominate the ladies' race. Well, that's it. Those are the medal winners up there after cracking racing yet again. And, uh, well, next round will be in uh, Hunter Mountain in New York. Eurosports will be bringing you round nine of the Grundig World Cup. So join us then, same time, uh, same day. As our victors of the day celebrate here to the crowd.